That was it. That was a credit or my oldest guy. I'll leave it. Amazing order. Hmm. What do we got on Zoom? Okay. Hey. Bruce Wheeler's here. Hey, Bruce. Hi, it's Emily Julie Hackett. Beth. Emily Hackett. Hey there, Peter Zorchak. Sorry, my wife's out of town, so I couldn't come in person. Hi, uh, Ashwag from the Indirect Discharge Program. All right, and in the room. Brendan Wood. Corey Hilding, SPC. Sup, Jensen, LCPC. George Anderson, Vermont Rural Water Association. Um, Dr. Pierce, Select Board. Tim Ryan, Chair. And the water meeting. <clears throat> All right, folks. Um, quickly, uh, the agenda. Uh, Trisha couldn't make it today. That's not last minute. Email from her. Um, we have approving meetings minutes. Um, main focus for this meeting will be going over the spreadsheet and JV's here and. Secondary to help do uh, that got sent out to folks uh, last week. Uh, do an update on the school board and bond vote where we are with that. And um, Trisha was going to do an update on the outreach subcommittee. We had a meeting last week, uh, so one of us will do the update. Uh, and hard to believe, but uh, Next, our next meeting in two weeks will be our last meeting before the votes. Wow. Exciting times, exciting times. Uh, any any uh, glaring omissions or in, any additions we want to answer the agenda tonight? You even tried to carve out some rough time estimates to keep us on track. Trying to keep us at an hour and a half if we can, but we'll see how that spreadsheet discussion goes. We're good. Everybody have a chance to look at the meeting minutes, draft meeting minutes or else time. No move to adopt them. And the move, we have a second. I'll second. Okay, and that's our proof. Um, how do folks want to do the agenda tonight? Do you want to dive right into the spreadsheet or do you want to do the quick the updates first and leave what time's left for the spreadsheet? Um, friends, I am going to have to go at the top of the hour. Um, so to there the extent go. I can be helpful, I, we should probably do that sooner than later. Okay, great. Thanks for that reminder, JB. I forgot about that. You mentioned that last time. Um, and then if we need to continue it, Tori volunteer to run the spreadsheet, if we... She's need, if we more need than capable of doing so. I don't want to volunteer you, but I think you volunteered yourself last. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, can I, um, I just have a suggestion before we start, JV? I was just pondering how this discussion can go there. It, it could easily go in many different directions, many different scenarios, but it, it seems like the, um, to me, the, our bottom line is we should have um, a, a, a couple of different scenarios for the capital costs and maybe at 
full bond vote funding, maybe half that amount if we anticipating some grant funding and maybe zero that amount. Obviously, zero is not going to be any any um, impact to the taxpayers, but just maybe I'm just I'm just making that number up of the full amount and maybe a lesser amount. And right. Then, and on, on the OM side, um, it, we can factor in the capital costs and any impact to town um, residents in their assessment. Um, it's going to look very different if there's a zero capital and more, and um, versus a full one one point. Uh, and change million, um, and we're asking the town residents to subsidize some of the O and M costs in uh, above and beyond the um, okay. town, the town buildings. <clears throat> um, now I want to I want to I want to stop. I, I want to talk about that assumption. Um, let's look at the let's look at the tax impact sheet here and i can screen share if you want i've got a yes please if i if i can get permission for that bradley is uh gladly, gladly volunteered to run the zoom okay. tonight thank you bradley if you can do that okay there we go we got it great thank you okay I, I want to be clear about what what the assumption is about what the taxpayers are actually going to pay. Um, there is some number of dollars that would be put ultimately will be put on the grand list relative, you know, related to the cost of wastewater. From the standpoint of tax impact, it does not matter if those dollars are a transfer to a you know a wastewater account for capital, a transfer to the wastewater account for operation and maintenance. Um, what this spreadsheet assumes in each of these scenarios is that basically the taxpayers are paying all of these have something fairly similar. This one, rate options one and two, the town is paying as a customer of the system only. Okay, so I wanna make sure, and I'm gonna, I, let me put a note. Okay, so scenarios one and two, rate options one and two. The town is paying as a customer. The town's only paying for the gallons of its municipal buildings connected to the system. Okay, and that includes a share of the capital, share of the operating, but it's basically the town is a customer. Rate option three, the town is paying their two cells, J7 and 15. The town is paying the full cost of debt repayment, which could go to zero if we don't have to bond. And it's paying as a customer for a share of the operations related to the town buildings that are connected. Same goes for option four. What the town is paying is the full cost of the bonded debt. And then down here in 15, it's a, again, the town's a customer. So it's paying its, its applicable rates. That goes up. In this case, because what the what is being subsidized is the rate charged to residential customers. Want to make sure we all get that one. I'm going to put a note up here. Rate options three and four. The town pays entire debt service plus. Okay, that. Now, we could do more different options where, you know, the town pays 50% of O&M, 
plus 50% of bonded debt. Foundationally, these numbers are within such a relatively small range that it doesn't make that much difference to the bottom line for either customers or for the tax rate. These are illustrations for, these are, these are the more straightforward ways to allocate those costs. Because if our, you know, O&M is basically twice the cost of capital, it's still, you know, $21,000 to $54,000. That's the whole range. This is not a big system with a lot of variability in cost. So what, what's good to focus on is the green numbers here, which match are what is going on the tax rate. Um, so did that help or did, are we? So JB, I'm just looking, so that you have yep. the capital, capital bond repayment, 2% 30 year at 469. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. That's, that's the cost summary sheet is where we do that. And this is one you can vary. We're taking the 4.4 million from Peter's most recent cost estimates. Less we assume 250 in loan forgiveness. 640 for the CRRP grant, 2.565 from ARPA. And then the variable here is how much additional state grant. If there's a half a million in state grant, the bond amount is 469,250. That is on um, the formula you use is PMT interest rate term principle. So there's your payment. So Jimmy, weren't we in the uh, 1.1 million range? Well, she gave us an extra 500,000. If no, right. This is one of the yeah. things. So, so what you can all vary till your, till your heads explode is the yellow cells. So if, if there's no additional grant funding, you're at 969,250. That is a payment of 43,000 per year. So that payment almost, that payment doubles without that half million bucks. So, so not just to clarify, 969,250 is our worst case scenario? I thought it was slightly higher than that. Considering no additional funding coming in. Um, Peter, help me out. I've got 4.4, I've got 4,424,250. 250 in likely loan forgiveness from planning. 640 is the CRRP award. 2.565 ARPA. Sorry, I'm missing, I missed um, what Jim's question was. He thought the bond amount without additional grant subsidy was 1.1 million. I've got 969,250. Warning says 1.12. Is that contingency related? I don't know. Yeah, 20% contingency. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, the 20% contingency number that I had was over here in H10. But I think we voted on 10, not 20. So, tw uh, no, I think we did 20. Sorry. I would, yeah, I thought we did 20. So I think what it is, 20 versus 30. I, I think the discrepancy, JB, is the. Um, you're, you're using 250 uh, subsidy and whether they're eligible for the additional 125 that haven't formally been awarded. Um, right. I think that's part of it. Um, There's your 1.1. 1. 1. Yeah. That's where you got to. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe, JV, would you mind changing that likely to that that's awarded? Yep. Okay. Got it. 
I just want to make sure we put out their bond vote number there as one scenario. Okay. It still isn't what's on the warning. It's still on what is what is the and we should be what is on the what the reminding us on the warning and we can plug that in. We should be one, two, four. That's such a tiny disparity. I mean, it, 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 all that all that warning is doing is giving you a. I mean, it gets mind boggling when all these numbers keep changing when we did the. Yeah, I mean that's a thirty thousand dollar difference. That's all different. I mean, I have got to know what it is somehow in my head. Jamie, what happens if you put just two five six zero 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 for ERPA? Oh, yep. two two point five six million. Yep. Uh, that's worse. That's one point four. Two comma five six zero zero zero. I'm sorry, Tori. I can't. I can't hear clearly the numbers that you want here. Um, two comma five six zero. Zero zero zero. Okay, that's a million ninety nine two fifty. Do you guys want to be may want to line up and see these these speakers? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they want to, oh. oh, line up underneath them. You guys too. You guys, um, this, if you guys want to move your table up a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, we we have some new speakers, JB. We're just lining up under <laughs> so you can hear. I'll get uh, sorry about that. I just want to make sure we get that number correct. Um, and, uh, and and you had about half of that as as a scenario, which I think is is good. Well, again, I, I this is this is changeable. You can yeah. run any number you want in that yellow box, and you'll see that impacts here. Then what you need to record is what happens per 100,000 assessed value, you know, what's the total cost of the town, what's per 100,000 assessed value per year? And where does that lead in these scenarios? What's our monthly rate for residential? Electricity. Yeah. I think it makes sense. The committee can let me know if this is in Accurate. I think it makes sense to use the bond amount that we agreed on at the last meeting, maybe use half of that and maybe use a quarter of that. And those be the three things you show folks. Um or, or at least for your or, or those things you use for your discussion. So, um yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Right? So so the full bond amount um one million pounds. One two five and half of that and quarter of that is that can that yeah. be plugged yeah. in? Yeah, how do we start with the full bond amount, JV, and, and which we have up there, right? Um, Correct. And yeah, if, if we could walk through this scenario, that would be great. Yep. Okay. So no. So this is a million ninety nine two fifty. Do you want to do it with just forcing it to do the number for? The one point one two four. The bond amount. Yes, the, yeah, the, yeah. the bond amount. Because they warned that bond. Amount. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call it the full warning. Yeah. Amount. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to make some new sheets and then we'll send it to you. So here is the full warning amount. Ouch. That's not a pleasant number. Well, yeah, I'm looking at the, the bottom rate tax of three hundred thousand. Okay, now that's now remember rate, these are for this is for customers. This is not people outside the village. Okay. Um, where is the so where's the number JB for just town residents outside? 
Yeah. Okay, that is line, it is rows 27 through 29. Okay, oh, there it is, sorry. Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna make myself crazy by making this column really fat, but that way we can see this. This is this down here is system customers. This is tax property tax plus sewer rate. So per do you want three hundred thousand of assessed value per year? Again, we've got really different ranges. So let's make a little chart of that. Okay. Option one, option two, option three, option four. And again, there's more options for that, but let's call it this. Single, let's see, uh, taxpayer outside village, not on system, 300,000. Sorry, I'm compulsive. Okay. So, the real trade off here among these scenarios is um, if you had a home in the village, so your sewer rate per month would be. Bloop, 138 bucks a month, that is, or 50. If we fix it, that's a fixed rate. 74 if it's, if the town pays more, 45 if we hit it. Now, remember that we can adjust these rates. The yellow are boxes where we can adjust that fixed rate for the residential folks. So it's a trade-off. Are you asking, do you want to ask the taxpayers for, and this is per year. You know, if you're asking the taxpayers for, and I want to put this store in here because a couple of these, when you fix the residential rate, you affect your commercial payers. So, so Jamie, just for clarification, the option four is um, the bond for, for town residents outside the village is the bond capital repayment plus essentially subsidizing that fixed rate. Yeah. It, well, and again, the, who subsidizes that fixed rate is... I mean, yes, by paying by, okay, so in options, in options three and four, the town is subsidizing everybody who's on the system by basically they're just paying operation and maintenance. When you fix the residential cost, the, if you look at that rate per month for the Wolcott store, just using them as an example, goes from 65 a month to 143. So it's your non-residential users who are also subsidizing those residential customers. Somebody's got to pay that nut for the O&M. If you fix the residential value, who's left? It's municipal and commercial. I keep coming back to... Um what you have highlighted in yellow and uh, that that uh, rate for the two and three bedroom and and the store rate the, the store rate seems high in option uh, two right that's because you fixed the residential rate Emily right. has a hand up and I'm sure something to say about that and um, but. I mean, I, I, I like the the fifty and forty dollar rates, or the forty five and thirty five rates. Um, the one forty three, almost option four. 
Right. That's more, and that's more, that's more on the town. Exactly. But how much does yep. that, um, this option for, I know I don't want to jump ahead in scenarios. I'm wondering how much option four might drop if we have a half capital or a zero or a zero capital. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> because, we can, because we can you know, illustrate that. You, did, you know, $107 a year is, you know, it's to me like $100 a year extra. Like I asked, we asked, we went around the room last time and said, how much more are we in this room willing to pay on, in our tax bill per year for this system? And and I thought we came up with $100 as, as, as kind of our maximum. Um, so, but if the capital costs go down, then, you know, we might, we might be in that range. Right. Emily, I see she has a hand up. Sorry, my mute wasn't working. Um, so I have a couple of questions. I remember I heard Linda say some time ago that for the village residents, I'm sorry, I'm out walking. So $35 a month seemed reasonable at the high end for the village residents. I've heard you say $100 for people outside the village. I have a question. I'd like to see a scenario where if you were capped at the 4 million ARPA grant with a 30% contingency, where that would put you guys. I'm sorry, with, with how much ARPA grant? 4 million with a, so cap, you know, cause the cap is 4 million. I would like to see a scenario run where 30% contingency goes back into that construction cost and a 4 million cap. Um, Sorry. Okay, so Emily- I don't have yeah. to run it right now, but I would like to no, see that scenario for the community. I, I okay, Let, let's do that. But when you say with the 30% contingency, do you mean start with a total cost of 4.7? Yeah, that's what she's saying, yes. I think. Yes, please. Okay, all right, so let's do that. Bloop. And I'm just gonna highlight this in, Orange, because to remind myself. Okay. And we want the ARPA to be a total of $4, 4 million. million. All right. This is going to tell me I've got a circular. Net bound is zero. Okay. So. Hey, is, is, we're there, gonna... is there a subtle hint coming there, Emily? <laughs> no, let, I can't. I can't okay, say a word, just... but I would like to see okay. it capped out at like whatever the cap is to get the essentially what, what I'm seeing here is that if you were at the four million dollar cap, you really are a tiny bit less than the four million dollar cap for that warning to be zero. Yep. What I'm, right? Okay. Understood. Okay. So how does that, how does that impact that okay. with the thirty? You're, you're breaking okay. up, Emily. Nope, that's okay. So in Emily's scenario, the capital repayment is zero. Significant difference. So here we go. All right, so this is without, if we don't have capital repayment. And let's, for for the sake of argument, let's increase how much the town would put away each year as reserved to 10,000. All right. Your taxpayer, your tax, your Wolcott taxpayer outside the village would be looking at a maximum of $18 per year on their taxes. Um. Okay, which which option, you didn't, we didn't do an option five. Any of them. For Emily's, right? No, no, no. Okay. okay. So, so here's two different things. At the bottom, you see this full warning amount and then right. Emily's scenario. Got We're it. keeping the four rate structures. Okay. You got the it. Same, so I got it. But varying the option in terms of how much capital, how much, what's the bond amount? Or is there one? So, Emily's scenario, we're going to call it equals. 
zero bond. Okay, so you don't have to bond for capital. In this case, um, I might suggest going back and dropping the residential. Maybe we go 40 and 25. So an apartment's paying $25 a month. A single family's paying 40. In those fixed rate scenarios, you're still not asking your taxpayers for more than 20 bucks a year. And what about the commercial loan? That seems high. It does. Year? In that, that that's, um, no, oh, that's their monthly. And why is this fussing at me? Why does that say okay, equals G16? Um, well, the commercials, this is where, this is where I would want to do, if in fact, we, we know that we're getting down to, you know, that you're really in a lower range here. Um, the town could probably take on some of the O&M costs. Um, um, JB, Boris had made a point you on know. the percent reserve. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've seen values from generally 10 to 25% of O&M for a reserve. Okay, there's 25%. That changes us by about four bucks a year for a taxpayer. And I, one yeah. thing that you had talked about in the um, ordinance discussion, and I think maybe important for communicating the cap on residential users to the public is that the portion of O&M um, that's related specifically to capital upkeep and water quality um, mm -hmm. there was some thought that there was a greater responsibility for that. And when you run the numbers, it, you know, works out to be about how this cap is, is working. Um, yeah. It, it, or you it, could, it, yeah. Yeah. You could have the town put away all the reserve and, mm -hmm. and your system users are just paying purely the O&M. Again, the dollars are fairly small. I, I have to say, these rates for the Wolcott store, that's, it is so much less than would cost, than, you know, that's, that would be low for a sewer bill. I think I'd love to know what it would be in Morrisville for that same amount, but that's, that's not a, that's not a hefty, it, these rates, that's even the hundred and 18 a month. That's not a hefty sewer bill. And that Morse will be like 250 more likely. Yeah. Right, and we could, it seems like there's a little bit of wiggle room between. Definitely. Somewhere between 25, Definitely. somewhere between 25 and 50. Yep. Or for 25 and 45 a month for residential. That we might have a little wiggle room to bring the Wilkins store number down a little bit if we went say 35 and 25 instead of uh, four. There's a little bit of wiggle room there anyway, right? Yep. Yeah. In this, in Emily's scenario, you got a lot of wiggle room. Yeah. We, so, could, we could figure that so out. I, wanna, I, would, I would like to hear from Linda on my scenario and the numbers there. So I had a question about option two and four that we're looking at. Can you bring that? Out again, um, yep. So I don't understand why the taxpayers in option two and four is the same. The village people are the same, but why the commercial is different? What creates that between the two options? That okay. Um, in the first one. 
So just option two and four. Yeah. Everything's the same except for the commercial. What makes that difference? Right. In that's a, why is that different? That doesn't feel like it should be different. Flows per the tax impact L2. It's not, it's not subsidized then, right? It's not subsidizing the village. It's just paying the town buildings. Well, it is, well, it's fixed fee, so I guess that means it's subsidized. No, the, it, commercial is not a fixed fee. I need to figure out if this is not updating. Well, it's K18. Import times tax impact. Oh, something could be a little your import H12. Two notes looks pretty good. Okay, L11. No, it does not. That doesn't make any sense unless this didn't update. Well, it's just, I can't make up my mind which one I like, two or four, because uh, I'm so close to that. Maybe that might be that. Is it because that of the is... negative bond amount? That might be causing something weird to happen. Um, no, 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 because I overwrote it here. Oh, it's the town pays its fees. Fixed rate, town pays bond and its fees. The town, but there is residential no users. There, okay. there is no bond. All right, let's try this again. Oh, now it's really arguing with me. What the? Like that one. <laughs> yeah, everybody would like that one. <laughs> Oh, because it brought over the wrong thing. All right. This is 16. No, those should be identical. F16 flows PER import F17. That's the flows. Tax impact L11. That's your... And, and the one store is without the apartments, right? That's just for the store. Is that what we decided is, last time? Yeah, we moved the we moved the all right, let's try this again. That actually makes more sense. Tax impact. Shoot, this is going, let me do this. I'm gonna do, oh, here's my problem. There we go, okay, that is now fixed. Now I'm gonna undo on here. Oops, no, redo. Okay, it was the negative bond amount in this one that was gumming us up. It brought it up to 200 though? We, we were at, Nope, nope, nope. Um, okay, so I've got to full warning amount. Let me make sure. Zero. There are a couple of references in this spreadsheet that go back to yeah, this no. one. So that's that's a little gummy. All right, let's look at this one with the zero. And somebody wanted, damn it. Somebody wanted a, uh, larger reserve fund. Okay. So let's look here. Yeah, our tax, okay, this is, this one's right. There's something, when I copied the spreadsheets over, it doesn't like it because there's some references that, that are unhappy. So let's look here. This is Emily's scenario right now, which we like very much. Emily's scenario. Me too. I like that scenario okay. too. We, we yes. like it. We like it, Emily. <laughs> Me too. 
Can I play with a number on that one? I was curious what the old, uh, if you change the 54,000 to 70,000, said uh, the, the, the old M cost. Why? Yeah, so, just, well, I saw that it was SEI, which I assume is socio. Stone and Bar no, that's Stone Environmental Incorporated, as in Pete. Oh, okay. So um, I don't know how uh, the number was determined. I was just curious if it was, oh, if it ends up being a little bit more, what would it cost? Pete, would you like to address that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, it's a, We have a very detailed breakout of how we came to it, and we, and we included and got estimates from Nate at Simon Operating Services, and we feel we feel real reasonably comfortable with that. I would not suggest we try to find ways to make it more expensive right now. But we do have the the extra in the reserve. Okay. All right. So let's take a look. Boris, at... feel free to reach out tomorrow if you want to chat more about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, if we have the no capital cost and we drop the sewer bills to, I don't know, Linda, do you want to do $40.25 for per month? Yeah, that's yeah. okay. So where that puts us, that, that 209 is, is accurate, Jamie? That is right. It is. Again, I, you know, from Pete's and my travails in Waitsfield and working at, at the sewer rate call, I just got off before this one. Um, that is not an unrealistic sewer bill. I think I heard somebody say, you know, in Morrisville, it would probably be 250 a month for sewer. Um, it's not free, but it's not at all. Um, Jamie, what if we went 45 and 35 to, to try to decrease the store amount? Um, Does that make a difference? 12 a bucks bit? a month. 12 bucks a month. Because you don't have a big commercial base. It ups the towns, you know, a teeny tiny, eeny beeny bit. Um, yeah, it's like for the average taxpayer, it's like two bucks a year to get the store down by like 12. And it's, I, I worry the most about your residential users oh, in the village okay. personally. Um, can, can I ask a question, JP, just to make sure yeah. I was illegal? Um, so you can pay attention, they are. Um, you know, I think we've kind of, the committee has kind of come to a place of thinking that a cap on the residential rate makes sense. Um, wondering if we kind of do keep getting, you know, into kind of detailed discussions about the commercial rate. Um, is there a possibility that, you know, the, the, the town could, for example, um, approve a reduced rate um, for someone investing in the village for like a fixed period of time. Um, sure. Small business start. Um, yep. But you know, that kind of cap on like a case-by-case -case basis or a business like the store at Spain. Um, I'm just thinking that yeah. the additional brand list value is probably going to more than offset any subsidy in a case like that. Um, so you could do that. Now, under... The pure theory of utility law, of course, um, your rates need to reflect cost of service and they need to be equitable. Mm -hmm. um, there's a strong equity case to be made for setting a residential fixed rate. Commercial rates as an enticement, the better, the cleaner way to do that. So there'd be two ways to do it. One is when the system's built, the select board is going to constitute itself as the board of sewer commissioners under Vermont law. You can each year set rates based on your, your estimated cost of service, and you can charge as much or as little to the operation of the utility 
as you choose. In other words, you could vote to have the town pay an extra chunk or establish a new business reserve fund that would pay their fees for a period of years. So you're going to have a lot of flexibility there. And yeah. Um, Jamie, can we, I know we have your, your time is limited. So can we, can we have, um, just, just to clarify what Linda was mentioning. So op option two and option four in the Emily scenario, those are, why are those numbers exactly the same? Okay. So two and four is basically because there is no bonded debt. Okay. Got it. So okay, in got two it. and three, right. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, can we, um, you, can we just take another look at, so this would be in my mind, one scenario to choose from. Um, can we look at a the, the full bond amount again and then maybe have? Absolutely. Okay, I'm just getting rid of these sheets because they make me nervous. Okay, so this is full warned bond amount. Ugh. Okay, we, which we don't want to do. All right, so the full warned bond amount, I'm just going to put it here. It's a million one twenty four. Okay, I'm going to drop this sucker back down to our very paltry little amount. Okay, so million one twenty four. All right. <clears throat> Let's copy these. Copy these, and I'm typing them in instead of linking just so we're sort of memorializing these amounts. Okay, so, ouch. Wait, that's... Yeah, the big whack is on the... Um... And we're gonna, are we gonna keep that reserve amount um, consistent through the scenarios? Is that it's down to 4,000 again? You tell me. Um, well, uh, Peter, what do you think? Uh, sorry, I missed what the change that you proposed. The reserve amount. I just want to make sure um, we're, we're consistent through the scenarios, and we had 13,000 up on the last, on the MLA scenario. I, I'm fine with that. I, I don't think. Um, it's ever bad to have more reserve, but I recognize that we are trying to keep um, costs reasonable. And I don't think there's going to be a ton of replacement um, equipment or things in the first you know, 10 to 20 years. And then at some point, um, you know, especially if there's no no bond or no repayment, and um, there's some other benefits in the community over time, I think it's going to become a lot easier to start building up that reserve. Um, Julie Beth, what was What's the Vermont state law on maximum reserve? I thought we talked about that at one of the meetings too, right? 15%. 15, okay. Um, JB, for clarification again, in that, the, on your, yeah, the look at store per month, that doesn't include their additional assessment, right? It, do you mean tax assessment? Tax assessment. No, their tax assessment is down here. It's that's, an addition, that's, that's annual. These are this is annual. Nine seventy one plus the monthly new monthly one that you just put up there. That's over here. Yeah. Yeah. So they no 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 that would be that would be with the monthly fee. Yeah. Yeah. Nine. That couldn't be nine seventy one. It's not. 
Uh, not in this scenario. This is um... the full. I mean, the the O and M cost. Of, That's because I. Yeah, that reserve actually makes a pretty significant. That reserve makes a difference. Take new managers to come and everything else. It's going to have to. Yeah. Sorry, I don't want to distract you. So we have the, the full, the Emily scenario, the full bond amount, and then, the, then a, like a half bond, uh, bond amount as a. Well, as again, what do you, what else do you want to, and unfortunately, I really, I really, really have to go, unfortunately. Um, let's do, let's do 500,000 bond and a 10% reserve. And then I want to fix this to do the 10% reserve instead of the higher number we've been looking at. So you change so that. If, yeah, let me let me do that here. Um, it's worth the right, Okay, that's um, JB, would you be able to um, Email this to uh, to Tori so we can, we can continue this a little bit. Yes, Have absolutely. It. I'll I'll send it right now. Yeah. It's four seventy six. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is on its way to Tori. Um, but I think you're, I think you're starting to get, you'll start to get the idea of these ranges that we're looking at. I would just say, um, keep it, stick to this one tax impact sheet and only change that cell, that C7, um, bond amount. All right. So Tori, this will be on its way to you. This is very helpful, JB. I think we're my we're, pleasure. Yeah, I think getting, you're, I think uh, we're getting there. It seems kind of doable. It's uh, you know that um, the Especially more the, the more grant right the better. Yeah, and remember that once you get it built and you know what your debt is, we can really work down through what would be the right distribution. Um, and be more fine grained about you know who needs to pay for what each year and what those impacts are going to be. So, but this will get us at least in the ballpark. And, and we might and we may be able to if if there's a zero capital, we might uh, subsidize or fix maybe the commercial too. I don't know as, a, as an option. Yep. Try to, to try to bring down the commercial a little bit. If we're only, yeah. I think at, at zero capital, we were saying what twelve dollars a year or something. Some oh, the the zero is. I mean, the Wolcott store would be anywhere from seventy six to two hundred nine per month. So you've got room in that, and also your taxpayer impact. The maximum would be like, if you subsidize the residential, it'd be twenty two bucks a year. Put an extra dollar a year on that and then you could write down the commercial rates so there's there's a lot of room in there yeah did you get that uh, um any last minute uh tutorials for for tori <laughs> no she knows everything she's and my real hope <clears throat> is that tori's going to learn how to do this so i can finally retire at some point <laughs> <laughs> We're going to train up other people who can who can do this rate analysis and, and break it down and after choose my leading candidate. No, she's not a lead analysis. Nope. <laughs> nope. After our bond book, you, you can be tired. You got it. <laughs> okay, team. Thank you, Jamie. Have a great Thanks, night. JB. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> Okay, so did um, did JB did finish that last Tory? The the that was the half was a five hundred thousand dollar bond, right? Yes. Um, if, if we, I think those three tables side by side are helpful if we can get that one filled out. 
Um, the folks at uh, folks online, just uh, patience. Um, while we we're trying to get this side by side comparison from the Emily zero capital scenario to the full blown bond amount one point one million to about five hundred thousand, so we can see those three scenarios. I think we're I think we're close here, and I I'd like to get a, a sense of what what folks are thinking about as we're pondering those numbers and. Um, Hey, Jim, okay. just so you know, Ash, Ashwick and I have to go to another meeting at 630, just so you guys are aware. Okay, do, do, uh, do yeah. you want to add any updates, Emily, or any last minute thoughts I'm, before you? Uh, nope, just keep going. I do like that scenario, and I'm working hard for that scenario. So that's all I can say right now. We really appreciate that, Emily. Uh, yeah, we have, I don't know if you heard in the beginning of our meeting, we have one more meeting in two weeks from today before the school board vote on the siting, uh, that's June 4th. And then we have our bond vote the week after that on that Tuesday, uh, which we can do by absentee ballot as well. But so, yeah. So can, I, can I ask you a question about the school bond vote? I'm assuming is the school um, just woke up residents or is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. All we have is an elementary school K through um, sixth grade. That's all we have in Mocha. So really the school board meeting is really a good indication of what's gonna happen maybe the following week is what I, I think I'm hearing possibly. I think I'm hearing a lot of people going around, um, but Maybe, maybe not. I mean, people can vote absentee for the Australian, but they can't for the school because <clears throat> the school elections are done from the floor. Well, we're going to do, we had a um, outreach subcommittee meeting last week, Emily, and um, we're going to do a big last push um, for, for our outreach. And we're, we're going to work the phones, work our email lists. We have a list of all um, uh, town residents. Registered voters. Registered voters. And um, we all have our few dozen friends in town that we're gonna do a blast, email blast, and get, try to get people to come vote to the, to the school board, vote, vote in person, and to do the absentee ballot, um, or come in, come in that day to vote on the bond. Trying to get it all covered. Um, before I forget, um, I want to make a point of um, Amy was looking at your website and the school vote date has not been updated on there. I don't know exactly where she was looking, but it still was in conjunction with the bond vote on June 11th. So. Good to know. I think we we talked about adding some narrative to the town wastewater committee website page about the um, a little narrative about that they need to come to both the school board vote in person and get an absentee ballot or come in for the bond vote. We we should be really clear about that on our website maybe in bold, highlighted, uh, whatever we need to do to, to get that out. So yeah, uh, Bradley's in charge of that. I'll we'll have to get him to change that day. Um, it says on the beginning, it says school district warning, May 7th, 2024. Okay. It should say June 4th. And it um, probably should have a time. Does it have a time on that? What's the time? I'm looking at five. But what? what? I'm meeting. 
Why all these dates are here? Because May 2nd, it says the final taxes are due, but that's May 15th. And somehow the um, at 6 p.m. Uh, that's the but they we're doing a presentation at five, right? Peter, we decided five. But this is the school. School is at six, two and four. Right. Yeah, I think we I think the idea Tricia thought we should do the presentation at five and the vote at six. I think yeah. that's where we landed on. Yes. Yeah. And this one on the final notice was in states. So yes, the... anywhere I get rid of them. Oh yeah. It's confusing yeah. because people will think that's what that's you didn't replace it with yeah. the dates that makes yeah. more sense for your interim system. Right. But for this action for the interim. Yeah. We can do that. Okay. Um okay, Emily, did we ask we answer your question about the School vote. And I probably should give you some kind of um, Yes, sure. yes, you did. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to do our formal presentation at five, and then the school vote will be at six. The in person vote. On oh, June fourth. And to be clear, I think Amy was looking at the town project. If there, there's a wastewater project site, right? I think that's what she was looking at. I will cut wastewater. Our web, our web page, you mean, Peter? Yeah. We have a we have a look at wastewater committee website. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what she was looking at versus the town's website. Well, it's it's, it's, it's all the same. Okay. Okay, um, we'll look at it. Where do you want to pull that up? Okay. Oh, so that one's updated now? Um, yep. So, uh, Tori just pulled up uh, the three scenarios. So, we have Emily scenario, no, no bond, um, option one, option two, option three, option four. Um, and then we have the full bonded amount of 1.1 million. And then we can put that for certain. Sorry. And then we have a $500,000 um, bond option, about half of the capital bond um, and the different scenarios. Um, I just want, maybe we could just do, just go around the room. I want, I want to just get gauge, gauge us here. It looks like Bruce stepped off. Um, Bradley, do you, any any thoughts on the numbers we're looking at? As a taxpayer in town, <laughs> any questions? Any clarification? Um, so again, the no no capital is the first one, so no bond. The one point one million is the second blocked area there, and five hundred thousand dollar bond scenario. Um, and then at the columns there, we have the village resident sewer bill per month. We have the store per month, and we have the assessed three hundred thousand dollar house outside the village, um, there. Annual is that is that annual or monthly? And that's less. Do you do the three hundred thousand dollar house? Um, I think everything is monthly. Monthly. No. Um, the tax impact is annual. Annual. Okay. So just we're we're we're, we're we're comparing uh, apples to apples here. Is that that last column is an annual cost, and the first two columns, the sewer bill per month, are per month for the village resident and the local store, and the last column is per year. So you you can obviously see the per year cost for the town resident outside the village is. Pretty minimal from eight to twenty-two dollars. The full bonded amount um, ranges wildly from thirteen dollars a year to one hundred and ten. 
and the $300,000 house and the $500,000 bond option, $9 to $58. Um, those all seem pretty reasonable um, for the town residents in, in my mind. Um, and for the village residents option, uh, two and four are the lower numbers for the village residents. Uh, that's where the town residents are subsidizing uh, part of the rate. Uh, option one and three um, are a lot higher for the for the village residents um, per month. Any thoughts? Quick go around. Two and seven, three, seven. Oh, sorry. Two and three seem to be the more workable options. Not four. I mean two and four. Two and four. Okay. Two and four. Sorry. Okay. Stephanie, you're going to say something? I was just going to do the observation that, um, you know, in addition to uh, higher grant share, just making the system overall more affordable, it gives you more options for things like putting more aside in a reserve fund or providing some kind of you know, support for commercial uses in the village to encourage brand list investment. Um, I think if there's, no capital. Capital. if there's no capital, I think the higher your bond amount gets, the more trade offs the select board is going to have to make in terms of to keep the system affordable um, to taxpayers and users. Um, and I guess I'll just say that, you know, that. Our views for us continuing to pursue additional grant funds, um, you know, as the regardless of the outcome of the bond vote, um, to get you that flexibility. To, you mean even if we have zero capital? Well, no. Even if your bond vote, your you know your bond vote is going to happen before you're going to know on the the answer in some of those grants. So it, it makes sense to con even with a positive bond vote to continue to pursue. Um, additional grant funds, or if you have the ability to award additional grant funds to award said grant funds. But but I, I would think that you know you look at look at those bottom line numbers of the difference in terms of the financial impact, but also think about them in terms of the flexibility it gives future select boards to make decisions about capital replacement about incentivizing investment in the village, um, in addition to just the raw financial numbers. Yeah. In my mind, if there's a zero capital, we, we could ask town residents to, to, to maybe subsidize a little bit more because in the, in the Emily scenario, the highest amount is $22 a year. Mm -hmm. I think we could, we could easily double that or Quadruple that amount, and, and if we need to, at this yeah, point, this might be. Um, yeah, and I think it's real. I feel it's really important to have a um, good amount of money in reserves yeah. because then you're not going back to the taxpayers, something catastrophic yeah. happens. If there's no capital, bump really bump before. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I, I think you need to, you know. If we go with Emily and um, you know, I think the average person could pay thirty to fifty dollars more a year for a septic system but to make it sustainable in years moving forward. What was our um, reserve about Tory that we that we're at now? We went back and forth a little bit. Right. I don't know where it fits. Right, five, ten percent. Yeah. You have we could only go up to 15, I guess, is what to be said. 15% um, of 54,000 is 8,100. It seems like it's not it's, that, that number is pretty small, but if we're spreading it across. So, what are the 25% of 
I just I I just threw numbers out. Uh, I mean, 10, 10 to twenty five percent. I think the fifteen percent. Peter, correct me if I'm wrong, or if this is a JB. Is that there's a cap on the total amount of the cost of total capital costs, including grants on the system that you can have in reserve. And I think that might be 15%. You can't have more than 15% of the total value of the system in reserve under statute. But that's still 4 million times 15 is still, that's still 600,000. So you're still have a ways to go before having $600,000 reserve. You know, even if you're putting twenty thousand dollars a year away, does that sound right, Peter? Or... Quite honestly, that doesn't sound right to me. Okay. But i i don't I don't know that statute that well, so I'd, I'm not the one to ask. Okay. And and can I just on the capital side, um, for you to do it, so we're going to find out by the end of. May about one of the grants. Um, June twenty eighth is the normal. Book. June twenty eighth. Okay. So uh, just a couple of things I'll say on this. I I'm all in in favor of more reserve as well, but I I think Jim's right. Like we can't do one scenario with one reserve and another scenario with another reserve based on how much funding we get from the state. It just doesn't seem like quite the right way to do it. Um, I'll also say. Um, that I think some of the other O and M costs might actually be a little on the high side. Is my general feeling for like what it really takes to run one of these things on a um, daily or weekly basis? And I wasn't comfortable trying to push those numbers down, um, but I think there's a whole lot of things that will need to get figured out over the next year or two as we move forward towards construction. So I, I, I'm i reluctant to sit here and talk about a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there, um, when there's so many things that still need to get figured out. Are you comfortable for now leaving that number at 10, Peter, 10%, or should we go with 15? Well, what was it originally in the PER, I guess is the question. What and and where the percent number? Yeah, I didn't really know this was a, a variable in the spreadsheet that we were necessarily playing with. How about we just put stick with the 15%? Because there's nothing saying once you build it after the first year. The, the you can take a look and take a look and figure your numbers out for better when you have them for a whole year's operating cost. I think the original spreadsheet had four thousand in the reserve. Yeah, I think it, it makes sense for whatever you show the public to, to be based on the PER, which I think is the four thousand. Yep. Yeah. And so I think we should stick. What's the PER? Oh, the preliminary engineering report. The initial report. The initial report. <laughs> But that's yeah. I think that was right up here. Let's confirm what that was. But I don't think it's not going to make it's going to make a dollar distance, but not a huge drop. But anybody have access to the PDR? Website. Sorry. So can I? Emily. Sorry. Can I take two steps back to the grant discussion? Um, did I hear that you might be hearing about one June at the end of June? Or did I mishear that? The North, Northern Borders grant. Okay, June 28th, I think is what I heard you say. Yeah. Okay. So one of the, I, Seth made a really good point of, you know, keep pursuing the other grant funding because. Uh, the MBRC grant and the CBS grant don't have that ARPA deadline and could come be a great uh, grant part at the end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the ARPA gets spent first, um, CRP because it's ARPA deadlines. And then you have that little bit in, at the end, depending on how much they give you, if they give you a grant to, so I see it as a 
ARPA deadline um, yeah. plus, right? Um, as not just like grant funding to the project, but, you know, as a positive. Um, so the pressure of that end deadline is uh, there's some money there. And usually MBRC, it, they like to take a particular part of the project um, to put the money towards. So um, I thought that was, you know, Seth, I think it's a good idea to just keep pursuing it. Um, just to, to kind of have a safety net a little bit. So can you quickly summarize and clarify that? So the project doesn't have to be complete, completed by 2000, the fall of 26, but um, so, the project right. with your money has to be completed. Correct. So anything that the ARPA, like CRRP is the same way, right? Anything that ARPA is paying for, we have that really hard deadline. But like MBRC funds, they don't have that same deadline. So it, it's often a good pair because it if if construction had to go a little bit further into that fall of 2026, spring of 2027. But God, I can't believe we're saying that those years. Um, you know, their their MBRC can use that. But what I do know about MBRC is when we've worked with them before, they like to pick a certain portion of the project to complete with their funding um, versus ARPA, every, you know, anything is eligible in the project, right, that we're looking at. Um, and CDS is the same. They're, they're not on that ARPA timeline. So they have a little bit of some wiggle room at the end if, we, if, if the project needs it. So that's yeah. kind of one benefit that gets to still keep up pursuing those grants. So just a scenario I'm going to throw out, which is not an actual suggestion, but to, to illustrate this is um, you know, you're going to be um, probably saw cutting in the Route 15 corridor. Um, maybe the repaving has to go into 2027, but because you have, if you have the NBRC grant, that can stretch into 2027. And the last invoice for the um, NBRC grant could be that October the last fall to repave in the spring rather than rushing to do it. Again. For example, and that's, I'm not making a suggestion of construction sequencing, it's just an yeah. example to illustrate Emily's. Um, so think about that, these additional grants of getting you more money, but also getting you more time which is important too. Okay, um, so I guess we'll, we'll keeping on the clock here, wanna keep us moving forward. So we're gonna keep the, the reserve at 4,000, which is not probably not quite 10%, just because that, we had a $5,000 number that was 10%, but um, it's a little bit less than 10%, but we, we're being consistent with the PER at 4,000. And we should be consistent with that across the different scenarios. Um, and Tor, would you mind going to the right again? So any, any? I just want to quickly go around the room. Any thoughts on these three scenarios? Um, are, are options popping out to folks? And we have to look at all three scenarios because this is what we're going to, these are the numbers we're probably going to be sharing um at our formal meeting on on june 4th and we all have to be comfortable with these numbers hey tori i can't see the the numbers that are being shared with everyone else up there i don't know if there's a way to change that See you now. Yes, thank you. Are we going to be presenting all the options or are we going to pick an option? I think we have to use the full warrant amount as our presentation numbers, but say, but also go over these other numbers that these are possible, other possible numbers. But that I, this I'll is, just, sorry, okay. Peter, go ahead. No, I cut you off. I'm sorry. I just want to chime in that, um, and I don't know if Emily can 
can share anything, but I know other communities, including my community, is having are having bond votes. And I know Montgomery had a bond vote several years ago for, for pretty large bond amounts with not tons of explanation on what the ramifications are to folks. Um, and I guess I would just encourage um, simple messaging, um, especially knowing the variables that could happen with, with all this extra funding that may or may not be available. I think it's important to give people ranges um, and it, it's in, in my mind, I'd want to also see some other numbers besides the $300,000 assessed house. Um, we may have some numbers um, that are lower, some, some are going to be higher, maybe 150, a 300, and a 500, or something like that. Um, we don't want to get bogged down in too many numbers, but what does this mean? <laughs> For the average taxpayer, we can give them a range um, of numbers. I, that, I, was what, that was kind of what I was thinking, Jim. Yeah. I, I, would, agree. Should, should I would agree. We, Keep it more simple. Keep it with ranges. Ranges, yeah. Um, but it seems like we should select an option, or, or maybe, maybe that'll be part of the range, but it seems like uh, from what I'm hearing from folks, like option two and option four are being better received. I don't, I don't want to speak for anyone. Uh, Forrest, Alan, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, which one's better? Of the options. So we have the scenarios, we have the options within those. Of, I, you know, I like, I, I like to your point where, um, Keep it less than 100 for the tax um, impact. Per, per year. Yep. Um, that's a real good uh, goal. Option. And are we going with 25, 40? Yeah. For the fix, so that we, if we fixed it, option two and option four would be fixed. Yeah, I mean, there's some, there's some wiggle room. I mean, how do, people, how do people feel about the $40 and $25 numbers and the, and the store, the Wilkins store amounts is another, another way to look at this. You think those numbers would be good for your community? People well, a lot of too has Wilkins store at 406 on the phone. Oh. Option two. And the second oh, one bond. Oh, oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, that that seems. You're right. That seems. Why don't we draw like forty? It's like thirty five or something like that. I make sure that JV has not figured it out right. I mean, that's like. Yeah, that's way high. Um, maybe option four is yeah the best option. So yeah, I think option four is most consistent with the discussions you have had. You had about the ordinance. I think uh, option four. A little simplified of the discussions you had in the ordinance, but it's the closest to what you're explaining to the voters as your policy decisions. So I would use those as your ranges, would be oh, my recommendation. Okay, I'm gonna, um, quick round robin, everybody. Peter, last thoughts on this. We got to wrap the, rate the conversation up before we move on. I tend to agree with what Seth just said. I think um, or seems to mirror what you guys have been talking about. Okay. Sorry. Option four. Talking to about commercial. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> really? Yeah, that sounds good. Can you move that up um, to the top? What it says. Last thoughts. Four. Four, Alan? Four. Linda, are you happy with four? I am. So it's the town pays the bond if there is one, mm -hmm. and it pays our own fees. Residential fix. So everything else falls on commercial? Yep. Is that what happens? Yes. yes.
And two, two. Extraction of service. We might two, but I don't know why that why that number is four oh six. Actually, what is that's the full bonded amount. So I think the reason that option is that that number is so high is because under option two, the town is only paying the fees for the town oh, buildings. Oh, There's yeah. also a residential fixed fee. So yeah. the commercial is picking up everything to subsidize the residential users yeah. and the full bond, basically the full bond. So that's why the commercial rate is so high on option two. Yeah, like for maybe if we can do um maybe I can ask Seth and Tori um if we can maybe have a a summary maybe we can I would like to keep these options somewhere mm -hmm. but what option four which will be our preferred option but add could we add um other assessed house values to that just so we have a range. So I have a one a 150, a 300,000, and say a five hundred thousand dollar house. So it's down down the bottom. I think there is a three hundred already. Well, that, well, three hundred is what we've been using. Oh, okay. Uh, two hundred. There's a two hundred maybe. Or oh, five hundred. Is that five hundred? That's okay. a store. Okay. Assessed value. So we got okay. one, two, and three. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I don't now know. I have to come back to number four to see. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or Sorry, I have to see my face like this on that. Are, the, are, fo are folks um, happy with those three numbers, 100, 200, 300? Or do we want, are those fair amounts comparison of, of a range to look at? Or how do you usually explain the tax rate impact in your budget? I think. We never do this, but if you look at the school, mm -hmm. they always used to have that sheet. Oh, Remember the sheet? Huh? That sheet, I do know. That sheet. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where it came off of. Okay. You never could read the sheet, but they you always got it. Yes, I remember <laughs> the sheet. Um, so, yeah, maybe we can just have a... Troy, if we can have a, this copy to everybody... What, what we're looking at with all the options. And then if we can have a summary range of what we were talking about to say, what, what's the potential impact for you as a taxpayer in town? And in, in addition, in those three boxes, full bond amount, zero capital, and then 500,000. Um, maybe, maybe that last column that you have on the right, if Tori, would you mind scrolling over to the right again? Sorry. Um, instead of the three hundred thousand dollar house, maybe we can have a range number there instead of that. Range of what the value of house? Well, right. So if we say one hundred to three hundred, you it'll be five dollars to fifty eight dollars. You know what, I mean? what about just giving up per hundred thousand dollar? Yeah, I think people are used to that. Per hundred thousand to per hundred thousand dollar. Okay, we're yeah. three hundred. That's what I'm saying, but it used to be that school because that school sheet. Yeah. And, okay. And that's what people are used to. Okay. This is how your school taxes will be in fact. All right, I want to move on, folks. Um, are we good with this? Yeah. Shutting this down for now. I think this was a really good discussion. I think it was important. Um, Lynn, any other updates on the bond? Are we are we fair and square with the lawyers and the schedules and then uh, the I see project. that uh, the Linda has posted the uh, school vote. It has not posted the bond vote. She has. Yes, yeah, still Friday, but I think yeah, yeah. I, I actually posted, yeah. Um they've all been signed, everything was signed. Okay. Um, so we're, 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 we're good with the school then. 
what, what the school board and everything is there. Mm -hmm. They look on like the post office or out here, the warnings there. Okay, uh, I have a I have a bunch of um, still flyers left over. Um, maybe we can work on that. Lit, uh, Trisha had a really good front porch forum posting uh, on the narrative. Please show up for the school board in person, and please get a ballot for the bond vote. I think we really have to emphasize that collectively to everybody. We need you to do these two things. Um, and get that on our website. And I think that's really important. Like I said, I have some extra flyers here. If folks want to hand if you're in discussion with your friends and neighbors. Um, so we had a we had a productive outreach meeting talking about some of this. And um Corey and I talked about maybe going on WLBB at, towards the end of May. Uh, I didn't, didn't know that. Tori was a radio star in the previous life. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so we maybe we'll do that. And uh, so I guess Dan Noyce, I spoke to him yesterday. And he said he did post something about the look at wastewater project in, a, in last week. I guess he said last week's column. Or like, yeah, his column. Or the la not this issue that's out now, the previous one. Supporting it. Um, we'll have our individual outreach projects, and we're just asking everyone on the committee that lives in town, please get word out to your friends, your neighbors, email, phone calls, in person visits. We're really gonna, it's really going to come down to, I think, a few dozen people here. And if we can each get a dozen or two dozen people to come out to the school, school board vote. And come and get a get a bond vote that can really make a difference. I mean, we saw Westford fail by fifty four votes. Say, forty four. Forty four votes. That's really if we can, if each of us can get a couple dozen people out, that can really that can do it. Just don't let them say, um, "Yeah, I'll be there. I'll vote." Just Offer say, to pick them up. Offer to. Or if you you know you can vote by absentee if you you know you're not going to be around or. Give them options, or you can vote early. You can vote up to twenty days ahead of time. No, if they come to the school or well, they can come to my house after for some beers. Some there, um, I'm curious if there's been any like kind of negative energy throughout the town or um, issues, questions that we should be prepared to address um, at our public meeting. Or has it generally just been, you know, getting the word out and people asking questions maybe of committee members? Yeah, I wish Bruce was still on. All I can remember is um, at our first um, informational meeting, some of the concerns were, were like um, Money to to replace it in twenty years. That's I have some I don't know. Um, yeah, it's, did we have enough um, flow for expanding yeah. businesses? Um, that was another um, concern. Yeah, I mean, there's. I just in general, I thought that meeting was pretty positive. There were there are questions and concerns for sure, but um, I was wondering if there was more side discussions in the community happening or not so much. Not, not really, which is a good thing, I guess, um, well, on the negative side. Yeah, I don't think they. Um, we haven't really given them any information on what the tax impact will be, yeah. so. You know, a few people grumbled like, you know, I can't pay any more taxes. But I talked to someone the other day, and I, it's he might the word must be around that we have most of the money to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Um, I don't know. What... Good. Okay. Okay. Um... So um, the, the other thing that I really want to press is we, we have one more meeting in two weeks. And um, 
Peter, I know the lion's share of the presentation might fall to you again on on June fourth. Um, I, I think maybe we can use next meeting to to I don't know if uh, you'll have enough time to prepare for that or some idea. I think we're going to do. We we talked about it at the last meeting, kind of a modified version of the two presentations that we've already done, the one at the school and the one the one here. Um, for our roundtable, and really focusing in on uh, what, what we're required to talk about. Obviously, uh, that the cost, we have health concerns, um, and uh, O and M costs, rate costs. Uh, this what the system is itself. Kind of those broad subjects, those broad those broad top, topics that we. We'll need to cover. Um, so maybe we can have reserve next week's meeting for that. And also, we we'll have to have. Um, we can start talking about the contingencies um, at the next meeting. We're uh, well, I'm going to be optimistic and say both of these votes are passed, and start talking about what this committee, um, what our priorities will be after the votes. Um, and I think at a, we discussed it at a more slightly relaxed pace instead of maybe two meetings a month, maybe back down to one meeting a month, um, and keeping this project moving forward. And obviously, Peter um, and Amy and LCPC are still going to have a lot of managing grants and, and the survey and design and the permitting and everything else that has to happen. Um, but we also, I really want to be ready, worst case scenario. I prepare for the uh, uh, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. That if one of these votes fails, that we uh, we we have a contingency plan because we're going to have to. If the bond vote fails, we're going to have to um, have a, a petition for a revote ASAP in order to meet the August deadline. So we're going to have to really have a plan. We have to collect. Petition uh, signatures and have that. Um, I don't know how that works, Linda. So I'm going to lean to you if, if worst case scenario that that, that fails. If the school uh, board vote fails, do we have option to petition for another vote? How does that work? We need to think about worst case scenario. Um, but I'm optimistic. <laughs> I, I see the, um, I don't know what the contingency plan is for the school vote, but I see that as like almost being more critical um, just because the funding stack could change pretty dramatically over time after the June vote. So um, that could certainly change the project pretty significantly once we really know what the funding is. Agree. School board vote is most critical right now because I I don't even know if we have would we have time. We would still proceed in my mind with the bond vote even if the school vote doesn't happen, and then hope to do a revote on the school board vote. We we need to think about this. The legal. I don't. You, you need to work with Belinda and have her call the Secretary of State. She already did ask them what happens if the whether the school bond vote goes down, whether to hold the Australian ballot vote. I will have to look, and, and, have to look and see the statute on when you can have a revote. I mean, I think or there's two. When you can I, have, when the, the voters are allowed to petition for revo. What are we going to say, Peter? Yeah, I guess that's tricky. I mean, I see them as two separate things. One is borrowing money on the town's, you know, behalf for this system. The other is whether or not we have a site for the system or not. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I would think we would still hold the bond vote, but it, at that point, it gets pretty, pretty tricky, I guess. Right. 
Right. It seems like we should go ahead with the bond vote no matter what, I think. Um, but it would be good to know what the procedure is if the school vote fails. And, and just to your, the point, your question, Peter, I did have uh, a conversation with an anonymous person from the school board um, wondering um, why uh, there was supposedly a field at, at one point in the town forest area, uh, I'm pointing here, but uh, to the uh, east of the school, on top of the hill, there was a meadow up there with supposedly good soils and, and someone on the school board. I guess there were a couple of people on the school board wondering why that site was not looked so at. Was looked at like oh, it's on the trees. It, it might be covered with trees now. At one point, it was a field up on the <clears throat> ridge. Right. Um, I heard them address that. We did our best to look at the um, the whole parcel that that is going to now be the town forest. Um, in general, this the slopes are too sleep too steep on the property. Um, I'd be happy to look at it specific areas with anyone. Um, it would be helpful to, I guess, know what that area is before the meeting, I guess, to not be put on the spot. This just um, came up like two days ago. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is a, a big parcel and I, I certainly did my best to explore it as much as I could. Um, that's not to say that there isn't some place that we missed, Peter. I, I believe if, I, if it's the area, I think it is, and you'll be able. To, it will pop up on the maps based on the soil suitability. But it's kind of a star shape, um, just south of the school. But is if you is bounded by pretty steep slopes. Um, okay, I'm pretty sure that's what is being re referred to. Um, but you should, I think, take a second look at the soil maps. I think it'll jump out. Okay. To you. That and the other thing would be whether the other thing would be the uh, conditions of the rules for the town forest. Is it just covered the right of way up to the school, or would that not be allowed under the uh, conservation easement? Yeah, I mean, right now, the, just for folks that aren't familiar with the town forest, they're bogged down and delayed six months because of one contaminated telephone pole that is the, the contingent, like the, the, the real estate deal cannot be completed because there's one telephone pole that needs to be removed, removed and decontaminated before closing. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if we propose a, a septic system, a community septic system up there, that that deal would also fall apart. Well, it's under conservation uses too. The whole thing is under conservation. So, I'm not sure whether they allow that or not. Well, I was shocked by the person who brought up who's also on the first committee. Yeah. I, I do think this does highlight possibly a rationale for moving forward with the bond vote, even if something goes haywire with the school. Um, is I don't like gut is that that option based on Peter's previous work is not going to work. Um, but it means the project would not be completely dead. Um, and we could figure out an op another option to work with the school or um, explore once again. Um, you know, we, we know, need to pack the school board meeting, is yeah, what we need to do. We do. We need to make sure people are there. Um, and that turnout will likely be less than the Australian ballot. And if there is a, you know, groundswell at the last minute, um, it would be good that it's a groundswell people for, for the project. Right. Okay, any last minute thoughts? So we're gonna focus on the presentation at our next meeting. So we're the June 4th presentation. Um, and the last outreach push and any any other last minute things. And worst case, let's just call it worst case scenario planning. All right. 
Move to adjourn. Move. Move. Adjourn. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, everyone. In a couple of weeks. Thank you.